Hi, everybody. Good morning. Well, I got one amazing fan. That's fantastic. Thank you. You need a hobby, sir. All right. <laughs> well, how was everybody's night? Who got drunk? Come on, there's one, that one, we got one honest man in the room. <laughs> For once it wasn't you, yeah, right. Where, where were you? Uh-huh, iced tea, yeah. Long Island iced tea. Yeah, right, that guy over there, he's a trip. Scott Madden went with me to, uh, we, every year we go to, I go to China. I've been, I, I think last time was my, was it my 13th or 14th trip I said, I can't remember. It's hard to keep up with my lives, but it, uh, uh, I think the 13th, 14th, 15th trip, something like that. I've been to China a lot, and uh, Scott went with me, and we did a tour. We went to, uh, he didn't go to all of it. He went to Indonesia with us. We went to Singapore, to Thailand, to China, went to Vietnam the year before that. Every year, we, uh, all the mastermind people get invited to that, want to go. I go over and buy. We do a lot of cool stuff. We, we buy a lot of, um, I buy a lot of physical products in China. Uh, for import, we sell through our Survival Life Division and through our Planet Amazing Division. We we sell all kinds of crap, but uh, but it's a fun trip. So we drank a little bit in Asia. Yeah, the water you can't say. Yeah, uh, the <laughs> turn, turn this. Can we? Can you go to this? I don't know if y'all have seen this or not. I just want to show it the ones y'all haven't seen it because it's pretty cool. Hi, I'm Mike. Founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up. Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandra, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're gonna stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are dollarshaveclub.com and the party is on. I look right. I put your and drive like a gang. So when I'm coming to see you, see you. It's an example of not boring marketing. Uh, I want, I, uh, can you pull a screen? Can you give me the screen one more time? I want to show something. Look at the view count. That's how being a little bit not a dull ass will make you a whole lot of money. I mean, they got something like 150,000 customers now. That's insane. And the dollar razors are the tripwire. If you really want the good razors, they're more, and they've got all kinds of other services and things that they'll sell you to their customer. That was their, you know, that was their tripwire. All right, so uh, you can fade out of this now if you want. Go back. Uh, okay, so uh, first off, uh, if you if you guys have questions this morning about anything that we did yesterday, before we, I want to bring up a couple of people and do uh, some hot seats uh, that had some questions about their profiles and things like that. Uh, who has, if you have questions, you can come to the mic over here and I'll try to answer those questions for you. Uh, we'll do a little bit of that. We're going to have this first session this morning. We'll do this. We're going to have a first session this morning where we're going to build your lead magnet page, your squeeze page, you, for lack of a better term where you're going to get your, uh, uh, or we're talking about other ways to get leads rather than a squeeze page. And uh, um, and uh, uh, and then Richard Linder is going to come up and go over uh, the actual funnel structure with you, which is 
uh, that's what he does. He's our funnels guy, and, and among a lot of other things. Richard's been with me longer than anybody else has, so he knows me more than just about anybody. So he's going to show you the how the, the mechanics of the funnels work if you guys are interested in that, which you should be because you do all this work to create this copy. You're going to want it to work after the fact. So he'll be up to do that with you for a while. And uh, Yes, sir. Sorry, I forgot my name tags. Bob hey, Diamond. Um, so I, you, you can know, tell me. It's backwards. It's still Bob. It is. It's really easy. So the um, I don't know if this is a good question for now. If it's not, you can just answer it later. We pulled Rapleaf on our list by products, like who buys different products. And it was classifying a bunch of them as high net worth, which seemed odd to me. I've met these people, and they, they don't seem like for one group of products, 20% high net worth. For another group of products, 30% high net worth. And what I'm wondering is that, that does that fall into a normal band that you've seen for a real estate info product? You know, DIY, make for money. For real estate things. info products? Yeah. yeah. It, it does. actually okay. does. Yeah, you guys are, for the most part, uh, did it give you age? Age, and the, the two, two products were doing, one band was 45 to like 55. And that maybe. was the lower net worth, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And the others the higher, were to sixty. It was like yeah, fifty to reason, sixty. The reason why I think they classify high net worth as over a hundred thousand dollars in disposable that's income. That's the other thing I was going to ask you. Yeah, dude. I think that's what it is. It's not a big threshold. It's just basically saying they got a hundred grand. And most people that are most people that are sixty five that are looking to invest in real estate got a hundred grand. You know, they're they're that's the thing. You're it's the reason you're pulling a high net worth number is because of age. So primarily. one of the things that I thought of from that, I thought, well, should I? Should we then make a product where it's like something they can invest in? Like here's a house, go buy it. Or here's an apartment building, buy a share in it. Maybe. They, they, they probably, your, your audience probably by and large has good credit. Uh, especially the older group is going to have good credit because credit, credit gets better by age. Uh, you have a different problem though. Uh, their risk of, you know, we risk status with money. The definition of status when you're 65 is whether you're in a nursing home or not, or whether you're in a, uh, it's not just status. It's a different equation. So, so I'm thinking about why what does, offer. Why doesn't a 70 year old man buy a Mercedes Benz for $100,000? It's not necessarily because he's afraid that $100,000 will reduce his status. He's afraid that he might run out of money before he dies. Right. So it's a different, it's a different equation. It's more of a primal, uh, security need you know they uh, older people past 65 70 they tend to be conservative by nature they tend to not have so many people to impress uh, they still have the same primal things that we have you know it doesn't matter they still have the same they still want to raise their status they still want to be more successful than their friends they still want to have an interest but they're also uh, I didn't talk about the compassion and passion compassion uh, inversion, basically. How about that, Niels? That's pretty good. Passion, compassion, inversion. So that's it's, a chapter heading, I think. It sounds it? fancy, doesn't it? But basically, what that means is that I don't have a uh, dry erase marker. That's what it means. That, oh, I got no. I, the hell would you put the dry erase marker over here and put the mar, put the would you put the markers over here in a board way over there? That doesn't make any sense. Basically, at 18 years old. Um, everything, you know, this is passion and this is compassion. And this is an 18 year, this is not the right way to do this. This is a, uh, you know, this is maybe a 65 year old and this is an 18 year old. Their line's going to be, the younger you are, the more passionate you are about things typically they have, if anybody's got a teenager, you know, they have zero compassion for the most part. They are you talking about compassion for others or? Compassion for others. As you get, uh, as you get older, uh, some people, a lot of people, most people become more compassionate. And they start thinking about uh, things that take care of their kids, take care of their grandkids, uh, make sure their wife is secure if they were to pass. So, like, so it's a different, there's a wholly different level of status for them. So I changed my webinar. If then thinking about that, I changed my webinar. I'd probably change the sales letter, although I'm not too familiar with sales letters. I know yeah, you start thinking about being a better dad, being a better granddad, you know, legacy, 
things like that. You start, so your status becomes not necessarily what is my status today, it's what's my status legacy going to be, you know? If you, I think about that all the time. It's the reason I'm writing this damn book. It really is my driver for the book is because I want my kids, hopefully, you know, I have this vision of that. It's probably bullshit. They probably won't care. You know, the truth is they probably won't give a shit. But I have this, but you know who cares? Me. Because I got this vision that they're, that they're going to be sitting around with their kids 25 years from now going, son, let me show you the lesson dad showed me. And, you know, that's going to be the thing. That's what's in my head, right? So that's a driver for me. It's a big driver. And they're also driven by uh, their status is what the hell did I accomplish in my life? You know, that's especially true in the 50s when you're in a group of 50s. 50s is driven by, 40s is driven by, uh, I'm in my stride now, give me mine, it's time to make mine, right? I want to make my mark. 50s, you're going, damn, you know, I'm, I'm not going to live to be 100 probably, so more than half of my life is gone. I've not accomplished a great deal. I want to accomplish something. 60s, I'd say, and this is generalizations, 60s more, uh, you know, I've tried for me. Now, what am I going to do for my family? What am I going to do for my kids? Other, than If my survival is intact. Now, if my survival is not intact, I'm scratching. Do you understand? You mean if you have enough, like you have some savings, you have some money? Is that yeah, what yeah, yeah. If, I, if, if my survival is not intact, I'm panicked, right? I'm panicked. And that's what makes... Uh, seniors pretty big victims for financial fraud because they're panicked and they got the guy didn't save any money till he was 59 years old right and he's, st he's 60 he starts to see the t clock ticking he I see him no in my room those huh? guys I see those guys in my room every like day when I do a live event yeah they didn't save no money they come. Yeah. and uh, they they probably made pretty decent money and had the, the the thing is the better lifestyle they've had in the past the more motivated they are if they've always been broke then they're okay with being broke. They know how to be broke, right? You get a guy that's made 100 grand a year, spent 110, drove it up on credit, which is like also known as everybody, you know, and he's 60 and his job got eliminated by technology, right? And he ain't got no money left, but he's been living a hundred, he's been living a six figure lifestyle for 40 years, right? That's scary. He is freaking. And if he's got two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars, he's freaking just as bad, if not worse. That doesn't seem like a good customer to me. Like the, my reaction to that is, I don't really want that customer because I've got a panicked person giving me their last money in a desperate like search to get twenty five percent a year, which sounds to me like a recipe for a problem. Uh, unless I can find something else to sell them. Yeah, you, the I had it was funny. I, I had a conversation with uh, uh, Daniel Frischberg, is one of our financial experts that works on the on the our financial uh, newsletter side. And I asked him that the other day. I said, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm 60 years old. I got $500,000. I know I'm going to live longer. I'm used to making $100,000 a year. You know, what are you going to do? What, what would you tell me to do? Because I would tell you to get a job. You know, I'd tell you to get a job and reduce your lifestyle. And then I would help you to invest your money. And, and the big thing with him was you've got to learn to not invest very often, but invest in high, high leverage things and high leverage opportunities when they come along, but be very, very, very patient about what you invest in. So look at 100 houses, invest in one versus look at three, invest in one. Only, you know, be and really be cognizant of risk more than reward. You know, the, and they don't want to hear that, by the way. But that's not the, if they're panicked. Not if they're panicked, they're, they're <clears throat> probably. I, I imagine in my mind a, a flailing person half drowning. Yeah, but I'll tell you the only that's good a, thing about that is, if you can figure out a way to help them, it's good work. Yeah. No. I. You I, know what I mean? Yes. If yeah, you have I, a if you have a realistic way to help them, it's good work because. Uh, and they're. I'll tell you one thing about them. They're motivated. They're motivated, and they're usually not afraid to work at that point. They're they're going to really. You're going to find a higher level of ambition there than you'll find in somebody else. Because they're facing, they got a gun to their head. Their belief system is changing, right? It is. It's like 
no different than if I held a gun to your head and say, look, I, I gave you, you ever see that movie DOA? I gave you a shot and in 48 hours, it's going to kill you. Oh, yeah. You know, you're yeah. going to die in 48 hours flat. I got the antidote here, but I got to have a million dollars. Right? You're going to do every damn thing you can do to get me a million dollars. Right? Everything. Absolutely. And there, that's where they are. The only difference is the shots five years, 10 years, 20 years out, but it's imminent, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out to give a lot of thought to what product you know, <clears throat> do I put together or have. Yeah, it, to, there's, that's, that really it's the good news about that demographic is a lot of things that are older opportunities to you are brand new opportunities to them. So you can present something as an opportunity, all technology in a lot of cases, is an opportunity. You know, we used to joke about, and it's, I could still do it. <laughs> they just must be out of shit to say this Dance morning. party over there? Uh, the, I heard about that yesterday. Somebody was a tattletale in a room and told Ryan, the Peter burned you from stage yesterday. He said, your stuff sucks. He wasn't even over there. Uh, the, but we used to tell people, we used to make a joke about it. Do you know that you can send emails out into the future? You know? <laughs> It's called an autoresponder. Right. If I'm going to the concrete convention. Yeah, it's new, isn't it? I'm talking about that. Right? Because that's amazing to them. They're yeah. not necessarily older. They're just behind. Right? But if I'm talking to the concrete convention, which, by the way, 60,000 people at, big deal. Right? And I, I could sell them email marketing services for $10,000 a month. Well, you're going to sell them for $10 a month to a bunch of internet newbie guys. You know, that's the, Jesus Christ, come the hell on. Knock on the wall like a I am. broke tenant. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Anyway, so yeah, that hopefully that'll give you a little insight, but I, that there's a, uh, you know, this, what this does a lot of times for a while, it's going to create more questions than answers. Yeah, that's, I was left trying to figure out what product to give these people and I started yeah. racking my brain over that. And I, and I also, I was having a really hard time interpreting the data because I just don't, I don't have any baseline. You know, it's not like I saw one product, 20% high net worth. The data definite, by the way, they have a data dictionary you can print out. And one of the things they said in there about high net worth, one of the little blurbs was, top 10% net worth in the U.S. And I was left wondering if it's accurate because they don't look, they're not that good looking of a crowd. Well, top 10% net worth in the U.S. ain't saying a lot. Okay, I mean, that would explain it because they don't cause look rich. Because really 10%, the top 1% wealthy, top 4% financially secure. The 5% under them are still, they're still scrapping. They're living in a house they can't afford. That's what I've got. So you're, got so you're, you're probably looking, I think somebody told me, I can't remember that, we know the guys that own Rap Leaf. Uh, don't, Bill's wasn't that somebody you know? Was that you or no? That owns rap, the guys on Rap Leaf? Kamal Tucker does. does. Oh, uh, Kamal, Kamal does. Kamal. Yeah. Kamal does. Yeah. And there, that's a, I think their net worth, their, their high net worth thing is around a hundred grand. Okay. Some yeah, of them that's... got a mil, some of them got 10 million, right? But when you're saying high, high net worth, they got a free hundred grand. Would, so, would one of the other services, which like means Nielsen? they probably got another hundred grand on credit cards. You mean available on credit cards? Yeah. So would another service, one of the payments like Nielsen or uh, Crystallytics? Crystallytics will get you more. Better? Crystallytics can get you way deeper data. You know, uh, Nielsen's going to get you still deeper data. Crystallytics may be better than Nielsen because Crystallytics pulls uh, multiple overlays from multiple data provider sources. They're going to pull you the stuff like do they own a cat and all that shit. Rapleaf can do that. They don't advertise it. They're trying to be sort of a, you'll probably hear from them because you do the consumer thing with them and it's kind of the low level stuff. Yeah, there's a little sign there that said, you know, Cindy's your Yeah, you'll probably hear from Cindy and she's going to call you up and say, hey, you want to know everything else about them? Because there's a lot more. Who was telling me this morning about a different service? Yeah, what's the name of the company?
start to try to determine where our best clientele is based on yeah. ROI matrix. Right? ROI, ROI matrix. I guess that's another way to look at it. We could take our best buyers, like the people who bought coaching, people who bought higher end stuff, maybe to analyze them. Yeah. Maybe we need to do and, that. Uh, did you, well, it, I, I tell people about Rapley because if you hadn't done anything, Rapley is a great place to start. It's a great you start. Know? It's Cause you, great. Because you do have a sex divide now, right? Yeah, 73% men. Yeah, I didn't kind of figure that. Totalcensus.com. Totalcensus.com, yeah. So, you, yeah, when you're getting the, uh, at least you can tailor your message now, you know. And you got some people on your list that are uh, 18 to 34, you know. Yeah, a little bit. If you want to talk to them, you can. Just talk to them differently, you know, because you, but you're, <clears throat> there's two ways you can do that. You can take that data and just say, I want to ignore everybody else and only talk to these people this way. I'm going to talk to everybody the way my customer avatar looks. Or you can create three customer avatars. You certainly need two, right? Unless you're just going to ignore right. the women altogether. In your thing, you don't really need to ignore the women because you've got, you know, you don't have to. It's still 25% of your business. It's still quite a big yeah. chunk. But if you talk to them as women, maybe with a woman guru voice that talks to them, you're going to have, you know, what's the Beardstown ladies that do the big investment group? That if you, if you have that sort of approach with them, you probably, you might be able to pull, you know what, you might be able to pull half your business out of that 25% because guess, guess what's not happening? Nobody's talking to them. The women are interesting. So the women, I just know this from being in the room with them, like doing live events. Most of them are single. Most of them have some money that they've gotten from their divorce and they, they want some place to put it. And there are a lot of them are very entrepreneurial. They're, they're in my experience, more likely to act. Like I meet sure. more women who are like, I'm using your stuff and I get this, that, and the other thing. And it's like some little four foot tall lady. It's just a dynamo. What, man, men, want, men mentally masturbate. They sit around and talk about it. It's women just do it for the yeah. most part. And if I, in my company, when in, in, in the companies that I've had in the past have been most successful, almost everybody in my company was a woman. I employed almost exclusively women because they get shit done. Men don't get shit done. They sit around and talk about getting shit done. <laughs> That's what yeah. we do, right? Women get a lot more done. It seems like they listen better, too, in my yeah. experience. I'm like, the, if I well, tell if they, them to go do this, they'll Well, go if they don't, it. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Come in in the wife beater shirt and just slap them around a little bit. What do you bit. tell a woman with two black eyes? No reason telling her again. You already told her twice she ain't listening, right? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks. And Susan. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm very well. I think she could take me. I wouldn't try her. <laughs> um, I, I really want to get this for my, for my sure. product. I'm here to, like, figure this out because I'm... I'm, I've been throwing my head at a wall for a year and a half on this particular offer, trying a lot of things. There's a reason why. Because it's, because it's an improvement offer. Yeah. Those uh, are the offers. I'll tell you, the offers, by the way, if you're having just a horrible time creating an offer, yeah. it's probably because it's not a good offer. It's right. probably because it's, it's a horrible offer. It's not good to yeah. sell. Doesn't mean you shouldn't sell it for the good of your audience. Because yeah. sometimes you do want to do an offer that, is good for those people who are really good. Yeah. But you just got to say, I ain't going to make that much money. Well, I was thinking that maybe I could move it into an upgrade if I couldn't completely move it into a new opportunity. So I was thinking Guys, about, and I had... Um, excuse me. Can you hold on? I have, uh, so I have to give Tim credit. He came up with this. We were brainstorming this in bed last night. And he said uh, that a new position, that would be, uh, it's a really good place to think. Who was um, talking? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, can't I didn't say anything wrong. <laughs> what did I say wrong? See where your minds went? You were a dirty, dirty, dirty bunch of people. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm absolutely sure about that. <laughs> so um, new opportunity, as you said, would be running away with the babysitter. But I think I can get it to upgrade with this positioning. Get a hot, sexy new wife without getting divorced. It's a cool promise. Yeah. 
It's so it's bit. essentially how to train your wife to be sexy, which yeah. is what the product is. Yeah. That's what it is. It's yeah. like how to turn your wife back on by opening her to her own sensuality. Yeah. You still you still have the believability hurdle to overcome. What's wrong? See, why did I get a laugh? I yeah, I need to You still got the believability <laughs> curve to overcome. Like my wife could never be sexy. She ain't going to do it. She's going to refuse. Uh -huh. It's the same it's Well, the that same would be thing. layering hey, in the ninja stuff. Hold though. on a second. I got a, okay. I got an idea for you. David. Right. David. How do you overcome cuz I know it's he is in a dental market. You know who you know who their wives are that aren't sexy? They're office staff, right? Okay, so how do you get them to, how do you convince them they're going to make the office staff do what they want them to do, which is the same thing she's selling? How do you get, how do you convince them to, that, that how, do you, how do you tell them that they're going to get their office staff to do what they need them to do, right? Do you have anything that teaches them that? <laughs> Good question. Okay. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna be absolutely no help whatsoever. Okay, thank you. Uh, what were you the, thinking? I think I guess the point is, you know, they're they have the same problem with my employees won't do it, so they won't buy a like they won't buy an improvement course for their practice because their employees ain't gonna do it no way. Yeah. And they believe that. Yeah. That's the same problem you got. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna buy this make my wife sexier product because my wife ain't going to do it no way. Yeah, that's why the ninja layer has to right. come immediately after the catchphrase. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I could do this without yeah. getting divorced? How do I get be, that? That can be in the headline, you know. Right, that's what uh, I'm saying. That's the how to turn your how to, how to turn your wife into a sex-craved maniac without her ever knowing you did it. Yeah. I like that better. Okay. Without her ever knowing you did it. Okay. No, without her ever knowing how you did it. All right. Oh, really? Okay, now yeah. you got me. Is yeah. that better? You got, I mean, that, okay. see, to me, because without her ever, she'll never know. Yeah, I can write she'll, that. I can write she'll that. She'll never know. Oh, I got a, I got a, oh. Oh, what is it? You know what it is? <laughs> what? It's mental <laughs> Spanish fly. Seriously. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, men, it's mental Spanish fly. How okay. to turn your wife into a sex crave maniac without her ever knowing you did it. I like it. It's better than ninja. Yeah. Uh huh. That way, it's like the because they can visualize it. Spending you put the drops in the drink and the chick's crazy, right? Yeah. They've heard the urban legend. So yeah. you that I would roll with that. Okay. Because you got that's that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Right. You know? It is. Yeah. So, Thank you. Thank right. you so Thanks. much. Yeah. I feel relieved. This is Thank a good you. One. Thank you. So, but you got to keep the backup drink. <laughs> hey, talk to her, talk to Herb. These how long you guys been married? 28 years. You're still hitting it, right? <laughs> See? Talk to Herb. He'll give you some tips. Don't get too close, though. <laughs> hey, Perry. I'm Damon. Hey, Damon. Um, just with the language, when you're talking about things that reverse status, decrease status, do you, and you may be getting into this as we do the exercises, but do you actually um, address that directly? You know, a lot of the coaching on hey, when you're dealing with doubts yeah. and concerns is that you, you, you address them directly, but do you do that when you're dealing with these things that reverse status? Yeah, you can, but some some things, if you some, some sales is somewhat about subtlety. Uh, if you if you hit things directly, you know, like Susan has a problem right now. What she wants to say is, "Hey, your wife still wants to screw; she just don't want to screw you, right?" But she can't say that, right? Because that the guy don't want to hear that. He closes off completely, and uh, maybe. Have you ever tried it? You ever tried to just go with that direct approach? Yeah, I, I, I would not. Yeah. So, no yeah. So, you, so usually you can't do that. Usually you got to be a little bit subtle with them, you know, in their approach. What do you sell? I'm a physician. I sell things for people who've Penis been Penis enlargement pills and stuff like that? Huh? Nothing. No, not, no. <laughs> <laughs> I what, wish. What do you sell? Basically... Techniques for people who've been abandoned by medicine. You know, they have things that aren't treated with a drug or with a surgery. So. Okay. Yeah, well, you're selling, actually, you're selling opportunity. Yeah. You know, if you watch the, uh, if you watch the Cancer Treatment Center of America commercials, they're fantastic at that. Not that you want to go that direction, okay? I'm just saying, but their, their approach is, if you watch it, it's not, hey, we can improve your care. It's radically different right? It's a radically different approach. It's a totally new opportunity. 
And it, that's the thing about opportunity. It can't really be the more similar it is to what they've already tried or have done, the less successful you're going to be. So if you're radical, be radical. Don't try to be a radical conformist. It won't work. Look at uh, uh, a good example is uh, Joe Mercola. You know Joe? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So Joe's a friend of mine. He's stayed at my house a bunch of times. Good guy. Joe's nuts. I mm -hmm. mean, it, he's crazy. If you buy about what he does, he's a little bit crazy overall. I love Joe. He's a mm -hmm. good guy. He's, he's funny. But he's crazy about what he does. And he'll tell you he's crazy about it. Because he, he has a way of taking something that's really not even that radical and making it sound more radical than it really is. When everybody else is trying to make it sound more mainstream, well, you may be trying to make, now this isn't really. No, as, I'm, I'm, I'm much more really in as, his camp. This isn't really as crazy as it sounds. This is more like that. They don't want to hear that. What they want to hear is they're, they're reason, the reason radical works is because radical is opportunity. Right? Yeah. You understand? So it's a totally different way of doing something. Like when I come here and I tell you guys, stop trying to get people to say yes to your offer, right? Try to get more people to say no, quick. That's radical. It's totally different. It changes the paradigm, the shift, the lens you look through everything. So that's, that's why when, when you guys are doing what you do, whatever it is, the, more, the people who are the absolute most radical tend to find the greatest pool of followers, especially if they've been really let down with everything else. When you, when, when, when everything conventional you got ain't working, you start sleeping with pyramided books under your bed and crystals next to you, right? Because mm -hmm. ain't nothing else working, right? It's amazing how far down the rabbit hole people will go, right? Yes. They really will. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, man. Hey. What's up? Uh, I'm Juan. Um, we're selling an offer in the Spanish market. We're teaching people how to make money on Elance and Odesk and by transcriber, transcribing, right. being a customer support agent. Um, we have a personal growth list and we did a launch, launch and it did great. The problem I'm having with the customer avatar is, should I survey those, those people and see who bought or should I come up with the, the guys that I think I have the best chance to sell them this product? Yeah, you should, both really. Uh, you need to look at who bought, but that's not always a, a where did traffic come from? Google AdWords, 99%. And okay, then, well then, yeah, then I would definitely look at the buyer data because if you were pulling it from different JV partners, mm -hmm. then it could very much be skewed by who the JV partner was. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like if you're pulling, if all your buyers were coming from Bob Proctor and the personal development list, right? Yeah then I wouldn't trust that data. Well, all my lists, I executed the launch to all law of attraction meditations type of lists. Yes. So and they're I all sold kind them opportunity of, they're all, yeah, they're all sort of woo-woo people, right? Yeah. Your offer, by the way, uh, doesn't just appeal to woo-woo people. I did an offer like that. It's called Freedom 5. And it was a fiver. It was a, did you see that offer? No. So you can go to look at it. It's freedom5.com. What's Freedom 5 plan? Freedom5plan.com. Okay. And it was a $5 plan shows you how to make a uh, hundred bucks or 200 bucks a day by reselling stuff on Fiverr. It wasn't being a provider and doing it. My offer was actually better. It didn't require work. Okay. It, <laughs> it, it required you running ads on Craigslist basically and saying, I'll build you a website for 20 bucks and then going over to Fiverr and have a guy do it for five bucks and make the 15 bucks in between. Okay. That was, but the point is uh, those offers, they're great opportunity offers. Because the average Joe, we think, we think that everybody knows about Fiverr. We think that everybody knows about Elance. We think that everybody knows about Odesk. Yeah. Truth is, you walk out in the hallway and ask somebody out there at the drilling convention next door, they ain't never heard of them. Yeah, and in Latin America, it's even worse. Pardon? In Latin America, it's yeah. even worse. Yeah. And it's so, a huge opportunity because making 100 bucks for someone in Argentina is a ton of money. Yeah. That you'll, you'll, you'll kill with that offer if you position it right. I'm sure you already are because I know you do, you do a good job with your offers. But you'll, you'll, just, you'll just destroy it. But your offer is, you know, I would guess probably, if I were you, I would probably, uh, my first guess would be try college-educated people with a degree. Okay. Because uh, they're probably going to be better writers, going to be better English speakers probably. Uh, 
I would, that'd be guesses I would shoot at. Cause like they, they, somebody that's uneducated may think that they really have to work with their hands yeah. to make money in yep. that, in that environment. Okay. Uh, where somebody with a college degree went to college to not work with their hands perhaps. Okay. So that might be a good select for you. But I would really look at my buyers. If you went off Google AdWords, you're getting a smattering of everybody. So whatever that buyer data says, probably pretty damn accurate, I would guess. Even though they went through a product uh, personal growth list and Yeah, it'd okay. be better if they came from gen from the general population. Okay. But uh what I would consider doing since it's really cheap, what where are you at in Latin America? Where are you selling what uh what's your primary market? Uh, law of attraction, meditation. Uh, you no, mean in where, where? countries? Geographically. Uh, what's Spain is like 25% of our sales. US, Hispanics, 25. Mexico, 20. And then the, the rest of Latin America. Yeah. I'd pick, I'd take Mexico and Spain. Okay. And I would run, uh, I would run uh, Facebook ads. Just general, broad sector by age bands only. Mm -hmm. I'd run by age and sex. I bet you're going to find out you're 70% women. Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah, That'd be that's my true. guess. Yeah. I bet you're going to find your 70% women. I bet you're going to find that you're 70% 18 to 34. Okay. And I, but that's what I'd test. I'd test those bands and I'd pull a few more buyers in, maybe another 500 or 1,000 buyers that just came off a broad smattering of ads. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and I'd run buyer debt on them too that have nothing to do with law of attraction okay. or any woo woo stuff. Because honestly, if you if your message is to law of attraction people or to woo woo people, that's probably ten, twenty percent of the population. It'd be way better to make that offer work to everybody needs to make some extra money. Yeah, well that's the problem we hit in our company. We're doing great in personal growth, but in Latin America it's a very small market. So yeah. and it's the same effort to create an effort yeah. an offer and everything and I say, Why why don't yeah, go all mass you need market? to do is identify who that is. Your big advantage is traffic is so friggin' cheap it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, that's the thing where we got your traffic cost is a tenth of what ours is. Yeah, we get leads for 30, 50 cents. Yeah, whatever. 30 cents a lead. You can't, you can't. They don't not... have credit cards though. Yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah. I know. Well, I know you have it, but you have a ways to overcome that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I don't think it's a big deal, man. Uh, okay. And I'll tell you what else works for that, by the way. Uh, live, cheap seminars. Like okay. target Mexico City and say, you know, come for 30 bucks this weekend and I'm going to teach you how to do this. You'll bring 1,000, 2,000 people into a room. Uh, I've got friends of mine that do it in the Philippines all the time. Okay. They'll bring 1,000, 2,000 people in a room. And out of those 1,000 or 2,000 people, 500 of them got a credit card. Yeah. You know, 2,500, 1,500 don't, but you can do something else with them too. There's all kinds of crap you can do. Okay. You can set up a market. Do you have a marketplace set up yet? Uh, no, not yet. You are to do that. That's a great Buddha. So if you've got a marketplace, if you say, hey, buy my thing. I'm going to teach you how to do this. And here's a private marketplace. You can go, I'm going to make your, I'm going to make you a member of the national outsourcers association and, uh, give you a listing so people can come and find you and give you work and da, 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 da. And you don't have to pay the ODES fees and you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it's giving them something, but you, they've got Buddhas all over the place in that offer. They cast their belief into ODES. They cast their belief into Elance. It's owned by eBay. You know how big they are. Yeah. You know, yeah, or, you know, uh, Mechanical Turk for Amazon, which I'm sure yes. you show them and stuff like that. So these are the biggest names. You got all these brands for them to believe in. Yeah, and huge you know. numbers of yeah, they'll go, dollar industry. Elance is going to go out and look at this chart. Elance goes out. These are the people that come to Elance every day, and more than half of them are buyers of services, and that's 2,345,000 people a day looking for people just like you. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of, you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I look at my buyers, but I'll try to pull new ones from the new population, for, from the general population. That would be your... Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd, I would do that. Try to, get some, try to get some new buyers in from the general population, analyze those. Okay, and you would target people who speak English because they, their opportunity is higher, or some of our no buyers... No idea. Sorry? I had no idea. Okay. Uh, is there an opportunity for Spanish speakers on Elance and Nodesk? Yeah, they, they're would, starting yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's their level of success is probably going to be lower, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm not it's up to you, comfortable. Man. Okay. I, I, you know, you have the advantage of, you know, speaking and writing in a language and understanding the culture, you know. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye.